The San Francisco estuary is a complex ecosystem that lies adjacent to one of the most highly urbanized areas in the United States. This estuary provides crucial habitat for many endemic and migratory species of plants, animals, and resources that hold ecological and economic importance to the San Francisco estuary and beyond. Such species include the endangered delta smelt. Delta smelt is a small, slender, osmeric fish that inhabits bays, channels, shallow waters, and are found adjacent to wetland habitats. They are most common in low salinities less than 6 PSU with high turbidities greater than 12 nephilometric turbidity units and in moderate temperatures between 7 and 25 degrees Celsius. Due to having a one-year life cycle and being an important link in the food chain, they're one of the best indicators for environmental conditions in the estuary for government scientists, academic researchers, and for consultants to assess. Their condition reflects the estuary's condition, and if anything happens to the estuary, delta smelt will reflect that. Without them as indicators, the state of California and other agencies will have to spend more time and money into monitoring and assessing estuary conditions in order to sustain ecological and economic functions. Besides this, another emerging issue affecting delta smelt is sea level rise. As humans continue burning fossil fuels, which exacerbates greenhouse effects and the melting of the polar ice caps, the world's oceans will rise. This poses a threat to not only major coastal cities such as San Francisco, but also to Delta Smelt, its habitat, their plankton food source slash habitat, and its ecological and economic services. As the water increases in volume, salinity, and in temperature, Delta Smelt and their plankton food sources will breach threshold conditions and mortality will occur. For our study, we will analyze the extent and impact of sea level rise against wetland habitat, Delta Smelt distribution, and their plankton food source distribution within this estuary. Specifically, we will identify which wetlands in this estuary will be inundated and can no longer function as a habitat for delta smelt. After applying one foot of sea level rise to our analysis, we found that a small number of wetlands will be fully inundated and lost which will result in fewer habitats and food resources for delta smelt. The majority of wetlands surrounding San Pablo Bay and Susun Bay will be inundated which may decrease the distribution range of delta smelt in the future. Most wetlands located in the delta confluence and in the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers will remain and they can be beneficial for delta smelt. This signifies that delta smelt may be restricted to only inhabiting the delta east of Sassoon Bay. Furthermore, our analysis shows that out of 656 square miles of San Francisco estuary wetlands, 65 square miles of wetlands will be lost due to one foot of sea level rise inundation. Hence, 590 square miles of wetlands will remain in the San Francisco estuary. We hypothesize that more wetlands will be lost in this analysis, but in reality, only 10% of wetlands will be lost. We found that copepod distribution did not significantly change. Amidst wetland habitat loss at certain locations, copepods can inhabit or be adjacent to those areas regardless of wetland habitat loss. It is predicted that they will still inhabit their current distribution range in San Pablo Bay, Sassoon Bay, and in the Delta in the years to come. Although copepod distribution did not significantly change, Further inquiry should focus on their abundance and density in future analyses. Hence, they can still be a viable food source for delta smelt in their predicted distribution range. Suitable habitat for delta smelt includes the eastern part of San Pablo Bay, all of Sassoon Bay, and the whole delta. The most suitable habitat for them may be further east in the delta where there are more sluice, channels, food sources, tributaries, and wetland habitats available for them. Although they may be found in San Pablo Bay and Sassoon Bay, it is unlikely that they will definitely inhabit or migrate to those areas due to higher salinities. It is more likely that they will inhabit the delta due to more freshwater outflow. Hence, the delta was rated as the best suitable habitat. Specifically, the area adjacent to Webb Tract, Bethel Island, Mandeville Island, and Holland Tract may be the best delta smelt habitat in 30 years. Delta smelt may also inhabit adjacent sloughs, channels, and tributaries as well. These meandering sloughs, channels, and tributaries may prevent saltwater intrusion and can sustain freshwater outflow for delta smelt to inhabit. 
Our analysis was consistent with many of the predictions that fishery scientists and climate scientists asserted, which emphasized the general importance of wetlands for delta smelt and the potential for increasing sea level rise and shifting salinities that pushed these endangered fish east of the San Francisco estuary. A more accurate analysis could be conducted with better salinity data reflecting impacts of sea level rise. Additionally, a more robust data set on the distribution of copepods in the San Francisco estuary and their density in relation to wetlands could help inform future analysis. While greater wetland loss was anticipated, the wetlands lost to inundation were often located near other wetlands, which suggests aggressive habitat restoration could possibly rescue sustainable wetlands from future sea level rise.